All right, guys. So today's video, we talk about axles, turners, RCVs, Cobra. If you guys, after watching this video, want to buy any of those axles, we are a dealer for all of them now at Blown Budget Parts. Um, so shoot us a, a message or a DM or an email, Blown Budget Offroad at Hotmail.com. If you guys are trying to order some axles, I just want to throw this in here. Uh, we did become a Cobra dealer after. I bought the axles and this video was filmed so it wasn't mentioned in the video so i'm throwing this clip in now well guys another video with the x3 up on the lift um if you guys caught the windrock series which i'm assuming most of you guys did uh you've seen that windrock was rough on the old girl um i broke both rcv fronts as well as had issues with the turner axle that was borrowed um so you guys will see those clips a little bit after today from the day that I dissected the turner and fixed that up and sent that back out um, to Brandon that I borrowed it from. But today we are here to throw in the new axles into the front diff of the X3. So um, we're going with a different brand axle this time and uh, I'm gonna grab those axles, get them unboxed and show you guys what we're going with this time. a company called Cobra. Um, they make this King Cobra front axle. Um, they're based out of Texas and from my understanding this King Cobra axle is made 100% in their in their factory in the US which is really cool um, and I mean that helps keep quality control and things like that kind of wrapped up in, in my opinion anyways. When I called them to talk to them about ordering some axles for this thing, um, they are very cool, very understanding. Uh, obviously, I understand everything has a breaking point, and they were very cool about that, and they were like, as long as you keep boots on these things and keep the grease in it, and uh, basically anything within a year is what their warranty is, ship it back to them, and they'll fix it uh, free of charge. So, I mean, figured, why not give it a try? Um, the way we got introduced to those axles is actually from Drew. So if you guys have been watching the channel lately, you'll see that. You've seen that black X3 um, that was running a stock cage that rode with us a couple times now. And then on this last Windrock series, that X3 actually transformed into the, the white and blue buggy. It's still the same chassis, just uh, basically like a cage built around the chassis. Um, he's He was the one that's been running the King Cobras in the fronts in the front of that. And I was extremely impressed at what I seen out of those. And I was like, man, uh, if I ever have issues, uh, I think I might give them a try. They are the best budget friendly axle out there that fits in the Halo 30. So if you guys aren't familiar with um, the Can-Am design, I'm running a Halo 30 front diff, which is an aftermarket billet diff that changes the diff side stubs to a bigger shaft diameter um, than stock. So you can only run, to my knowledge, three companies. Cobra, RCV, and Turner. Um, as you guys will see later in this video, the reason I'm not running the Turners, um, I've just had issues with the, them falling out of the diff. Uh, I don't know if that's related to my suspension or my steering or, or what that's all about, um, but definitely something I didn't want to try. Um, the King Cobras, I've seen good things out of Drew's rig, so I'll figure out we'll give them a whirl. Um, my RCVs, I'll show you guys what broke on those. Um, I did have them in the rig for about two years, so they really didn't owe me too much there. Um, I am going to cobble those back together with new parts uh, just to carry spares. It, it's rough to carry spares on axles this expensive, but uh, it's kind of... I got away with it for two years, and, I, and it bit me, and it ruined a trip in a way. Good thing we had the old lawnmower, as you can see back there, not broken, and I was able to keep wheeling that trip because of that thing. But I really would have liked to uh, keep wheeling the X3. So we've got some pretty big trips coming up planned for the spring. So we, I want to get this thing running. I want to get this thing dialed in and I want to have spare axles. Um, it just never really fit into the budget and I never, I hope to never need them with the axles I was running. But today 
We're throwing in the King Cobras in the All-X3 and uh, we'll see how they do. I mean, I'm not trying to bash any company here. I've just seen the Turners, I've seen the RCVs. I haven't seen too much out there on the King Cobras, so I figure we're gonna give them a whirl. Um, you guys can make your own judgment on what axles you wanna go with for the future. Yeah, I mean, we are pretty freaking hard on our stuff, so keep that in mind. I don't really expect anything to just never break. You know, over time stuff gets worn out and that's just the nature of the beast, especially when you're thrashing pretty hard like we do. I'm gonna get this thrown in here, then I'll show you guys. I'll actually, after this, I'll clip to uh, the Turner teardown and then uh, I'm gonna tear down my RCVs at some point. I still have it and I'll show you guys what failed on those and go from there. All right guys, we're out here in the shop doing a little bit of axle surgery. Easily probably one of my least favorite things to do on these freaking buggies. Um, but if you guys watched the Windrock series, you've seen that I had uh, an abundance of axle issues. Started by breaking both my RCVs. Actually, started by breaking one RCV wheel side and then uh, borrowed a Turner Eagle from Brandon. And um, on the meetup ride day, trail 16 on that ledge, um, if you guys didn't see the clip, I'll throw it in here. Uh, when I bumped over, the axle fell out of the diff and that was the, the Turner Eagle on the passenger side. And for reference, so you guys know, I'm running stock shocks, stock springs, stock. The only thing different is I do not have a sway bar hooked up, but I do have limit straps set on the front of this thing. And I've never had an issue I've never had any other axle issues with them falling out of the diff. Um, it's an extremely frustrating issue. I will say this has happened to Drew on Cream Puff. So if you guys are, if you guys have been watching for a while, when we went to Black Mountain, Josh, Drew, and uh, one other guy hit Cream Puff when we were there. And Drew actually almost made it, but we thought he broke an axle at the top. It actually just popped out of the diff. Did the exact same thing this Turner just did to me. And uh, this was literally the first time I've ever ran a Turner and it literally ruined the end here. So you can see it's supposed to be splined all the way through. You guys know how an axle looks. Here's the new part, spline the whole way. Um, I mean, could you run it? Could you run it? Maybe. I think Drew ran it for a while like this, but being that this was a borrowed axle from Brandon, um, I wanted to buy the right parts, replace it, and make it 100% legit again. Um, but unfortunately, this part with the CV and everything comes like this, assembled, ready to rock and roll. But $260 down the drain, all because this axle fell out of the diff for unknown reasons. And uh, yeah, that blows. So that's an, act, that's an issue that Billy used to chase on his Turbo S that we never really talked about. He's running Turner Nitros. Um, we mentioned it a couple time in video, couple times in videos, but somehow his are staying in the diff now. But it was to the point where it would happen five, five to ten times a trip for a couple trips there, where his front axles would just fall out of the diff. So I don't know, pretty wild scenario, pretty frustrating because it just eats up money. And then when you tell the company about it, they don't really care. Um, they just want to. Um, Want to assume it's all because of aftermarket stuff, but they're the only companies that are falling out of the diff. So anyways, a little bit of frustration because I'm $260 in the hole for an axle that's not mine. And I got to take this part now, which sucks. But I'm going to get to that, swap that new piece out and get this bad boy shipped back to Brandon. So thanks to Brandon again for letting me run your axle, but unfortunate circumstances. Well, we got the old uh, old stub right there, pounded off. Uh, got all the pieces of the broken clip off the end of the axle. Get the axle cleaned up here. Brake clean this guy so the, the new boot has a clean surface to mate to. Now I gotta get this pounded onto there and clean her up. And then, and then I'm ready to ship this thing off. So hopefully it goes smooth. So far going smooth. That other piece pounded right off of there. Everything looks good on the axle, so that's good. Oh, got this thing all wrapped up. Got the new end on, new boot. Good to go. Gotta package it up and ship it out. 
So as far as the RCVs go, I was kind of on crunch time, didn't have a whole lot of time when I uh, put the RCVs back together. So I didn't get any clips showing you guys what failed, but basically the cages failed uh, in the CV on both of them and caused a lot of damage. But I was able to cobble them back together. So I do have a set of RCVs now for spares. Just figured I'd mention that. But as you guys seen, I'm no longer running them as my main axle. So for the next issue that the X3 uh, entailed while we were down at Windrock when I broke the front axle, um, I was leading the pack, of course, on the beginning of trail, not the beginning, but on the gnarly obstacle of trail 21. And of course, when I broke, I uh, went to hook up the winch, got it spooled out here, as you can see, and the winch didn't work. So that was just another kick me when you're down kind of deals. I haven't used my winch that much. like. To be honest, I mean, me and Josh were thinking about it when we were driving home, and it's like, man, I don't remember the last time I winched, so I'm not really sure when it failed or what caused it to fail. Um, pretty interesting, really, but we tested voltage back at camp on the two power leads there. We had voltage. Um, the switches all light up, everything works inside, so I reached out to Warren, and they have a, I think it was three-year warranty on it. Luckily, I've had it for about two years. And this is a worn Axon 5500, so like the pretty much the baddest winch people will be putting on these X3s stuffed up underneath here and hasn't really had a hard life. And uh, I guess they're thinking the motor failed. So on the Axon series, the motor and the contactor is all built into this piece here. Um, there, so these wires literally go directly back to the battery. They do that for simple and ease of installation so you don't have any uh like contactor or relays or anything basically you just have a low voltage set of wires that goes to um to your switch or you just have your small set of wires that goes to your switch and your controller and then your fused ignition wire and then you have your main batteries main wires right back to the battery that's cool for install but however if that relay is all that failed it's pretty unfortunate that I have to switch the entire motor now just to change that relay because it's I don't know let's see here's the receipt $421 is what this piece costed that's crazy Warren covered it though so they shipped me out this this is a whole half of the winch and the motor and the relay and everything is built into this um, you can see that's where the power wires go here's that low voltage connector I was telling you about or small wire connection so, I don't know what's entailed to split this winch apart and swap that over. And I don't know that that's going to fix it. I would assume so, though, because, I mean, there's really not much else to the winch. I don't think it's a mechanical issue. I think it was electric. And, uh, yeah. So, I'm going to get to pulling these positive and negative leads off. I think i got to take off the two bolts that mount this half of the winch. And I would assume these four bolts on this side and hopefully I can leave the other half mounted to the rig we'll see otherwise I'll have to pull these other two bolts off maybe maybe I'll just do that anyways I might just pull the whole winch off at this point we'll see something else to show you guys is look at how bent up my bulkhead is look at this tube um, and this guy you can see it's bent down this side's really bad that tube there and this bent down. It's actually hitting the arm fairly, but it's self-clearanced. Good to go. Rough. That's from uh, that's from when we can't cross stuff and we bash these ledges at like freaking 20 miles an hour, like idiots. And you're jumping over the stuff, but it doesn't quite clear the rock. That's from that. So that piece goes on there, kind of bolts from here to there. She's pretty pretty mangled, but it bolted off easy, so I think everything bent together, so I'm just gonna bolt it back on, is my plan. Hopefully I don't have to change anything. It's it's higher clearance now. <laughs> well, got half the winch unbolted there. Um, pulled out those four bolts on the end that I showed you guys. Right there. Disconnected the power wires up there. Unplugged this guy. And then took off these two back bolts that mounted this half of the winch. And then it's split apart here. 
and it looks like I've got like a little shaft that I've got and some spring deal. So I gotta do a little surgery here. It's pretty simple actually. Looks like that just slides onto there. That's about it. I don't know if that's how all that, all that does. I don't know, I don't know much about it, but I'm hoping that I'll slap this piece back on and I'll have a working winch again, we'll see. All right, so I ended up getting the new winch bolted on and uh, it appears to be good. A little bit of mysterious things going on, but it did work. So we're actually on the road right now down to Tennessee, do some wheeling. So hopefully my winch works. I have a funny feeling I'm gonna need it. <laughs> for where we're headed. So drop it down below. If you guys think you know where we're going, that's the only clue I'll give you. It's the Tennessee mountains. We have never done the trail that we are attempting to do and it's in the middle of the winter. So it should be fun. See you guys there.